What is up guys, long time no see. Uh, today we're working back on the four liter stroker V6 or three five liter, turning it into a four liter stroker V6 in a 2005 Dodge Magnum. Uh, today uh, we got a little work done in the background here. Uh, we got the heads all apart. We got the valve seats all cleaned up. Uh, we didn't get the valves cleaned up, but we did get the heads all apart, of course, before we could clean them up. Uh, all the valve seats look good. Need to clean the valves up. A little carbon, a little rust. Lap them in. Put them all back together with new valve stem seals and everything. Uh, we started polishing the crank over here. Our 4 liter crank. That's the 3.5 one. That's our 4 liter. We started polishing it. You can see where we started and where we are. So we need to finish polishing that. Uh, specking this out for bearings. We got tons of packages over here of engine parts, headers, bearings, gaskets, and everything for this little four liter that we are building. And yeah guys, so we are just gonna get diving right into it. We got some other fun stuff in the shop too that I don't know if you guys know about. I posted it on my Instagram. I don't know if you guys check that out. But if you don't, go check me out at Racing Ram Fam on Instagram. But we got a supercharger over here. Don't know what we're gonna do with it yet. I took it all apart just to check out the bearings and everything. Uh, we got new seals come for it. All the bearings are good in it. Uh, new coupler and just some little things. We gotta get the Teflon off the rotors because it's starting to chip off. And then we actually picked up a 5.7 Hemi. Kind of sad because it's like, could have Hemi swapped this if we waited a little bit longer. But we went to the junkyard and picked up that 4 liter out of that RT minivan. So if you guys haven't seen that video, it's right here. And yeah guys, so we're just going to get grinding today. We need to finish polishing that crank. We need to get these heads all cleaned up, put back together. We need to get the block cleaned. We just need to clean everything. And... Oh, we got a parts washer too. That's the other thing we got. Over there by the Hemi, sitting in the box, right there, right there, is a 40 gallon parts washer. So we'll probably put that guy, I don't know if we're gonna put that together today, but we'll put that guy somewhere. We'll need to move some stuff around and get it all put back together. All right guys, so the first thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna show you how I polish cranks. Um, you bring it to the machine shop, and I'm usually like 60 to 100 bucks to polish your crank, but I like to do it by hand. I like my finish more than a lot of machine shop finishes. So the first thing you're gonna need to get is a bunch of grits, different grits of sandpaper, wet sandpaper, cause you're gonna be spraying the crap out of this with WD-40. 600 grit to start out with, and then you can move up to 1000 grit, and then 2000 grit for finishing, and then some metal polish for the mirror finish shine after you're done. Um, I already went over these with 1000 grit. Uh, a couple of them I'm gonna do with 600 grit right now. Like this guy right here because we got a little scratch in the actual crank itself. I don't know if you guys can see that. Right there we have a tiny little scratch and we don't want any of that. We want this to be like a mirror finish. So when that oil flows up onto it, it just has a perfect surface to flow on because the oil is the actual ball. Like if you think of a ball bearing, you got an inner race, an outer race, and you got the balls in the center. The oil is the actual balls in the ball bearing. This would be the inner race and the bearings on the outside would be the outer race. And we want that to be perfectly smooth and we don't want any imperfections at all. Again, a mirror finish is what we are going for. So the things you're gonna need is sandpaper, WD-40, metal polish, and a shoelace, an actual shoelace. So the first thing we're gonna do is get the 600 grit out of here. And then I like to do is actually hold it up to it and then bend the paper to the size so we know where to cut it. Get a nice fold on this. And we're going to take our scissors, right where we folded it, and then cut right down that line. All right, so then. We're going to take our WD-40 and we're going to spray the actual journal of the crank and then we're going to spray the sandpaper. Um, while you're doing this you want to mic the crank the whole entire time to make sure you're not making it out around or you're doing something bad. Uh, I've already mic'd the crank. I'm going to mic it again after we're done sanding it and polishing it. But I mic'd it before we did this. Nothing was out around. 
about one thousandth of an inch is an out around spec for a journal of a crankshaft and that is like comparing here to here so like making it oval you want oval you want that perfect circle again so then we're gonna get our shoelace out take our sandpaper here and we are going to take the flat end and we are going to wrap that guy around the crankshaft there is a technique to this on how tight you should wrap this sandpaper and then we're going to take the shoelace itself nice flat I like to use a nice flat shoelace when I do this not a round shoelace because then it's easier so you don't get it bound and then there's a correct tension to do this you guys are going to have to play around with this if you're going to do this at home at what kind of tension you need and you want to make sure that shoelace is not crossing over at all it works great so now that we actually got a piece of sandpaper on there that we're just going to go back and forth like this for a little bit and then we're going to clean it up and then move on to 2000 grit Guys, right, so now that we got the crank polished and I'm pretty happy with it, there's a couple parts that I wish I would have done a little better job on. But I think we'll go back and I'll touch them up a little again. But we got it halfway clean, we got the journals clean, so what we're going to do now is we're going to get out our notebook and we're going to actually start miking this thing out to make sure everything is good and round and not too far down. So the first things I'm going to start with is probably the mains and then I'll go to the actual mains, the four mains, and then I'll go to the six connecting rod bearings journals and we'll be taking two measurements uh, 90 degrees parallel from each other or opposite from each other make sure this thing's not out around so this is a really boring part of an engine build but this is the most crucial part of an engine build because this is what's going to dictate if this engine's going to live or not or if we're going to just eat bearings alive all right guys i'm going to show you guys how to do this on one rod so you're going to need a micrometer uh, probably a good set this is a fowler not the most expensive set but it gets the job done um when you're measuring these so we're on rod number three i've already done the mains i've already done the first two rods measuring them out specking them out so the way i like to do it so we're going to do two diagonal sides we're going to do from like here and over here and you'll watch me turn the crank so the first thing we're going to do is get the micrometer somewhat close and use the right micrometer so we'll get our micrometer in here get her nice and flush and then the way I like to do it is I watch the air gap build on each side and then I kind of find the center through that and then after you kind of find the center I do an up and down wiggle and just tightening the thimble also slightly and you can kind of walk it back and forth to make sure you are in the center of the whatever and just like that we got a measurement and we got two point let's see two point two and then 75 plus 7, so 82, and our 10 thousandths would be 7. So that one we just got 2.2827. You guys are like, what is that? But that is right in spec. Our spec is 2.282 to 2.8235. We're a little under, but that's okay. I like a little bit more oil, but you can see all our measurements right here. So here's our spec right here. And then here's our first measurement, so journal number one, first measurement, and then opposite measurement. And right here, we're only one ten thousandths off right there, which is nice and spec. So that's what we're just checking everything. Plastic gauge works too. Just when you bring your crank to the machine shop to get a polish, just ask him to go over it with a micrometer. Just make sure that something's not out of the blue, like out around, because plastic gauge does not tech out around unless you like check it and turn the crank 90 degrees and then check it again plastic gauge does work I use it at work all the time um, it's quick easy this is the more professional way to do it they both work very good I just like this way because then I know exactly what I'm getting for oil clearances and all that stuff alright guys so a little stuff has been going on we got the valves lapped in well we got the valves clean first of all and we got them all lapped in I like to use a lapping tool uh, well I like to use a drill and if I can't get a drill in there I like to use a lapping tool so we clean the valves on our bench grinder with the wire wheel with a brass wire wheel clean them all up nice clean the seats everything to them uh, then we use some lapping compound right here put it on the valve seats and then we spun the valves and smashed it 
into the seat to make them sand themselves into each other. So all the valves are lapped in. Then we came over to our block and we punched out the one of the main oil gallery plugs right here. And then we took out a main oil gallery plug right here. And that's all there is on the 4035 blocks is two main oil gallery plugs. Uh, now what I did was I took my micrometer and I measured the size of the piston, the actual diameter of the piston, and it measured in spec. So then we went over here, hooked up our micrometer to our bench vise, and we set up our dial bore gauge, which is chilling right here. Set this guy all up and got him all set up to check just the piston to bore clearance and to check taper of the bore. We got no taper at all. It's like in the 10 thousandths, so I think one ten thousandths. It was, it was stupid close, it's perfect. No bore, so there's no taper of the cylinder at all. And then piston to cylinder wall clearance is four thousandths, which is good. Four to six thousandths is perfect, so that's good too. So now we're going to uh, hone the block out and then we'll take it outside and clean that block super well with the pressure washer and some engine degreaser. And then we'll set up the parts washer and clean the heads out, clean the crank out, and we'll start checking bearing clearances. There's a lot that goes into engine building. This is why machinists are good at what they do. So we got the parts washer put all together and look how sweet this thing is. This thing's huge. So this is a 40 gallon parts washer. It's gonna work great. We can clean the heads, the crankshaft in here. Probably even clean the block in here, but we're not gonna do that. We're gonna use the power washer. I like that way. Um, we got all the surfaces prepped, all cleaned up. Everything's ready to go. The block is ready to be cleaned. Crank is ready to be cleaned. The cylinder heads are ready to be cleaned. And then it's gonna be putting it all back together. But yeah guys, we're gonna call this a video. Um, the next video, we'll clean everything. I'll probably just clean everything. I'm not gonna video that. Gotta clean everything and then we'll start measuring bearing clearances. And then we'll start putting this whole thing together. We gotta clean all the pistons and rods. Oh, we gotta set piston ring gaps too. That's the other thing. Totally popped out of my mind. But we gotta set piston ring gaps too. And yeah, just some other small stuff that I'm probably forgetting. But as always guys, thank you for watching. As always, keep it boosted. And we'll see you guys in the next video. How disgusting that sludge was in that 3.5. This guy had to keep driving this thing. It's literally everywhere. So this is the windage tray and just look at this. It's just like muck. <laughs> Spun a rod bearing and just kept driving.